Howdy, homesteaders. I'm going to make some raised beds from pallets. Here are some of the pallets I was able to get for free. And, uh, you know, most of these pallets are not conventional. Uh, I actually got this from a local hardware store. Uh, it's got them for free, it didn't cost me anything. And they got some really nice boards in here, these unconventional pallets. This one pallet is really long, so it's got these really long, very strong uh, boards right here. So those are really nice. And also these, uh, these boards right here are longer. So those are going to be good for the sides of the raised bed. So it, this right here is a really good candidate for making raised bed. Look how long that thing is. About the whole length of the, the truck bed. So that's really nice. Then I got some regular pallets mixed in there too. And also I was able to get some boards. So there's really nice boards down there that, that are really, really good. So between all of it, I think I might have enough to to do one entire raised bed and if I fall short you know what I didn't pay anything for this uh, I'll just go back and get more what I have here is an official Bob's pallet buster uh, we purchased this a while ago we've had it for quite a while now, uh, probably since uh, the fall. And this is going to be our first time using it, so we're going to see how this works.
So, there you have it. I took a little bit to figure out how to work it at first. At first I tried to go in between the boards and going in between the boards doesn't work. My wife remembered watching a video and she showed me what she saw in a video and that worked a lot better. So once we got the method worked out, uh, it went pretty quick. And you see I got these nice long pieces of wood I can use for a lot of different projects, but I think for raised beds, these long pieces of wood are really going to help out. Uh, so this really is a good tool. Uh, the whole thing's kind of heavy, which you need that for the leverage, and it has to be strong to be able to work as a good pry bar. So it is a little heavy to, to carry. Uh, but it's definitely worth $80. When I looked at it, I was like, it's probably got close to that and just the metal. It's a very heavy piece of metal. Uh, so, yeah, for $80, I think it was a very good investment. And I could see getting a lot of use out of this. This is just a quick survey. Uh, that what, that's what I just broke apart from that big, long pallet. Some really nice, nice pieces. That's a nice board right there. So you got to pull these... Notice how the nails are still straight, so I could actually pound these out and possibly use them on another project. These are the boards I got that were already just boards, so I, these are nice usable boards. Uh, varying sizes and shapes. But, uh, very, very usable. All of this for free. I didn't have to pay anything for it. But one thing that there is... You have a trade-off. Either you're going to have something that's nice, uh, well prepared, ready to go, exactly the way you want it, and you got to pay money for that. Then you have something that's either cheap or free, but you got to work hard and you got to sweat. Just so you can understand what works best, as you put the pallet buster with this part over top the vertical piece of wood and that leverages against it and then these feet go underneath the wood and that is the best way to make this work there see so I'm going to uh, cut some points on the ends of these so that it can be driven into the ground. Um, uh, you're, everyone's responsible for their own uh, tool safety. Uh, if you need to, take a tool safety course. Uh, I'm not going to teach that right now. I'm just going to get this job done. But uh, you're responsible for your own safety. So I advise you get someone that knows what they're doing to show you how to use these tools before you use them. So basically I was just trying to figure out what the best way to put a point on the bottom of it. So first I tried this way, which I found was actually kind of difficult. It's hard to get the sole to, to cut the way I really wanted it to. Uh, so that one didn't turn out as good as I wanted, but it, it will still work. Uh, but this one turned out to be a better strategy. Just cut a little angle cut on the end and that's going to drive in the ground just fine. So I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. This little structure here I got for free. It was a shipping container box. That was the bottom of it. It was a plywood bottom, very thin plywood bottom. And they had those uh, corner braces. So I busted all of that off. And then this is what I got left. It's still pretty flimsy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put in some corner braces and the corner braces that I put in here are going to be driven into the ground and it's what's going to hold the, uh, the 
raised bed in place. So most of this work was already done for me. So I figured why not just go with what I've got and get a raised bed in the ground. I'm using some nails uh, that are left over from my rabbit hutch. that I'm not a carpenter. I already split my wood, so uh, these nails, as much as I'd like to use them because they're so nice, so straight, uh, but they're also so long and so big around uh, that they split the wood. Uh, I need to use smaller nails. You can't see me very well. It's getting dark. I'm about to call it a night. One piece of wood was so soft it split whenever I put a nail in it, and then the other one was so hard I couldn't even get a heavy duty nail to go through it. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna have to get my drill out and drill some holes. Uh, worst comes to worst, I might have to go out and buy some screws and put together screws. We'll see. Uh. 